Okay, so here is the lab talk, pre-lab talk for lab 10, Botany 111. This would have been the lab on April 8th if we'd been together. And what we're going to think about today is competition and uh, evolution by natural selection. And in particular, we want to think about the evolution of open or closed stomata, or rather the ability to control stomata, right? So um, I actually don't think this is true anymore, but in the past, you, uh, students used to look at uh, Arabidopsis mutants. So Columbia Zero is the sort of wild type, and OST1 is a mutant that um, I think probably Mike's talked about it in lecture at least. It's, it's had... Uh, changes to um, its ability to close stomata. And so basically these were mutants that humans created in order to understand how stomata work. So what you can do then is if you grow, yeah, so they've, they've knocked out this kinase um, that prevents the ability for the OST mutant to close its stomata. So what that means is if you look at wild type plants or the OST mutants, because the OST can't close their stomata, they show up cooler when you look at them uh, in terms of their temperature, right? So closing your stomata means that you're gonna potentially just absorb solar radiation. Opening your stomata means that you're gonna have evapotranspirative cooling. And so when we look at, yeah, so Columbia, two different mutants of OST. T today we're gonna look at OST1. And then again, if you look at the sort of water loss over time as you sort of allow them to draw down, you can see that the two OST mutants lose more and more water. Um, than Columbia because they just simply can't close their stomata. And so what we want to ask today is which one of these strategies is going to be the evolutionarily stable strategy. Now you should probably already know the answer to this um, because remember Columbia is the wild type that exists and we actually had to break some genes in, to make OST1. But we can actually do the experiment that is similar to the Matrix games we've been talking about, right? So I've been calling it the player and the opponent. I added these extra words. Again, if you're Googling, sometimes people call them the focal individual and the neighbor or the invader and the resident or the player and the opponent is what I've been telling you guys, right? So what we can do is we can have Columbia versus Columbia. We can have Columbia versus OST. We can have OST versus Columbia. And we can have uh, OST versus itself. And we can do this in wet and dry soil and ask which would be the ESS, right? So to do this, we need to estimate uh, fitness, which we defined in lecture as survival and reproduction. Arabidopsis is an annual plant. Um, and since the ones that we usually use in lab are currently alive, we can throw away survival and we can estimate fitness by simply counting the number of fruits they make. Now this is only an estimate, it's probably not a perfect estimate, but we think that the number of fruits they have is going to be correlated with uh, the number of uh, offspring that survive to the next generation. A little bit of botany, the Arabidopsis fruit is called a salique. Um, and some of them, you know, you won't actually see them in lab, but sometimes they're opening, so they look a little bit like a bean, but they're really small. Uh, a little bit like this is what siliques look like and they've got kind of three pieces so the seeds will usually be attached to this central um, almost like a papery kind of thing and there'll be seeds on either side uh, and then it has these two sort of doors that fall open so sometimes when you look at these on a real plant which alas you won't be able to you'll see them still closed or sometimes you'll see them open with maybe one or both of these pieces still kind of hanging on or possibly falling off and then the seeds disperse by, by falling off Right, so the experiment's gonna look something like this, and I already sort of talked you through it, but the idea was we're gonna have Columbia versus another Columbia. So if the pots are gonna look like this, they're sort of wide pots, so we can put two Arabidopsis. I'll, I'll show you the demonstration in a minute. We can have two OST versus each other, and then we can have either one competing. And even though these two are basically the same, um, we've actually planted them separately. So part of the, you're, you're only gonna measure one plant in each pot. And there's something that we need to worry about in, in science called pseudo replication, right? So the idea is if we measure this one plant in this one pot, then we count that as a replicate. If we measure this one plant and this one plant, well, we've, we've got two measurements, but we still only have one replicate. Uh, and that's what's called pseudo replication. You think you have more data than you do because these two plants are no longer, they're not actually independent of one another. So by measuring uh, Columbia in one pot and OST in a completely different pot, we have independence, which is an assumption of most uh, scientific tests. So even though these basically look the same, they're gonna, you're going to have two of them. And then as a control, we grew them alone uh, to get a sense for how these guys grow alone. This isn't necessarily relevant to the game, 
but it's interesting to compare plants that grow alone versus with neighbors. And one of the things that I like to do is to keep the amount of soil per plant the same. So what you'll notice in the demo video is that these pots are actually twice as wide as the alone pots, so that each plant has access to the same amount of soil regardless of whether they're competing with a plant. And so this should look very familiar to the matrix games that we're doing. And then, like I said, we crossed this design with, we kept some of them well watered and we kept some of them water stressed. And we organize these in a randomized block design like we've talked about in the lab before everything got shut down. So that basically what would happen is each group would get these two sets of plants and they would look very much like this, but they'd be mixed up, right? That randomized block design. So just a bit of a reminder, uh, matrix games are about categorical traits. Here we're thinking about, you know, can I close my stomata, the blue ones, or can I not close my stomata? And how does that shape interactions? Right. Remember, an evolutionarily stable strategy, or an ESS, is one that cannot be invaded by any alternative strategies, but simultaneously can itself invade alternative strategies. And success comes in the form of fitness. So in lecture, you've seen equations inside these boxes, and you've also seen letters. And well, today, what we're going to do is we're actually going to count the fruits, or you would have if we'd done this in person, you would count the fruits on the plants, and then you would write those numbers in here. And then we can just use the simple uh, way of solving games by comparing in the columns to find out which one of these, or potentially both, would be the ESS. So you remember there was a video where I went through all the details of how to solve a two by two uh, matrix game. Um, Normally what I do in this sort of pre-lab is I go through all of those slides that you've already seen again, but one advantage you guys have um, over the in-person version of this, you could just go back and rewatch that video. So I'm not gonna re-say everything. Literally, I would normally would just say everything I say in this video, so go back and watch it. Um, it'll tell you how to find when one or the other strategy or both. Remember, there's four possible outcomes. And one thing that, that is in that video as well is that remember we can predict the frequency of each strategy. And so if it's possible that the OST and Columbia can coexist, you may want to predict the frequency of the two strategies. So that's the pre-lab that what we've basically done is try to set up one of these matrix game style uh, experiments. One thing to think about is that we only have a density of two plants, right? The ESS is probably uh, something that operates at carrying capacity, right? So um, two plants is a pretty low dense uh, population. It's enough to get you some practice thinking with evolutionary games. But if we were going to do this real experiment for sort of uh, a, a proper scientific experiment, we'd probably want to do this at many densities as well, right? So two plants, four plants, eight plants in a, in a, in a single pot, right? Because we want to get up to the carrying capacity um, which is where we expect the ESS to operate. But two plants is good enough for uh, a freshman lab, so we can compare competition um, in each of these cells and get a, at least a rough estimate of when we expect these things to be ESS. So that's this video. The next video, I'll do uh, a demo of what the actual activity would have looked like.